في ساحة للعلم كنا نلتقي والحب والإخلاص زاد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته We greet you with the international greeting of peace in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome to another action-packed bumper episode of the Qurtuba Online KUA and Hilal TV Math Show Guys, I hope you guys have been watching the previous episodes uh, I hope you've been following our train of thought and I just want to also say thank you so much Thank you so much to all the people that have, and the public and the viewers, you the viewer who have uh, submitted all your comments and feedback to Hilal TV and Kurtuba Online. We thank you so much for the love, the positive energy that you guys are bringing in because that is what fuels us to do even better for you. So guys, if you're new on the show, uh, know that we are... Over a period of 16 episodes before your matric final exams 2022, we are now going to be covering topic for topic, making sure that you are fully prepared. Remember, I can only show you how it's done. I'll show you a few templates and I'll show you a few examples of each type so that you get familiar. Once you've mastered the templates, that's when you start working in your papers, working through your past papers, start applying it, working through memos. There's so many uh, past papers whether it is for IEB, DBE, Department of Education, uh, Basic Education, or the Independent Examination Board, or whether you are doing homeschooling, Sakai, or even if you are sitting in Dubai, Australia, Singapore, anywhere. Remember, if you, as long as you are doing the South African CAP syllabus, then the show is for you. Right, so enough with the chit chat. Let's get back to where we are, right? Let's, let's do a quick recap of what we've covered in the previous episodes. We've covered the entire functions, all the different types of functions. If you've missed any of the shows, please go to Hilal TV on YouTube. Uh, you'll see the Kurtuba online math rescue show. They'll all be all the different episodes, They're one and a half hours each. You can click on it. Also, you guys know, Tuesday evenings, Thursday evenings, 9.30 to 11 p.m. And replay, uh, repeats or the replays, the reruns on Saturday and Sunday mornings. Okay, guys, so we finished the entire functions. We finished the whole of sequences. We finished the whole of series. We've done sigma notation. We've done the whole of calculus, right? We're now at the last part of calculus, guys. We are at the last part of calculus, which is optimization. But we ended off the last show. We ended off the last show where we had to find the equation if the graph was given, the cubic function, right? Great 12, you know what I'm talking about, right? If you don't know anything about math and you're just enjoying the show, you're enjoying the energy, it's bringing back memories of your days that have passed, then just enjoy the show, send your feedback, and like we always say, don't be a troll, okay? We're starting with calculus application, but even before we get to calculus application, there's one more type I want to show you. There's one more type I want to show you. And watch this. If they gave you a graph, if they gave you a graph, right? Let's say the graph went like this. And they gave you, remember in the, in the, at the end of the previous episode, remember at the, pre, uh, at the end of the previous episode, what we did, we gave you three x-intercepts. Remember? Go back to the previous show. So now I'm not going to give you three x-intercepts. Now I'm going to give you the two turning points. So I'm going to tell you this point here is 4 and minus 6. I'm going to tell you that point there is 1. That's your y-intercept. And I'm going to give you this point. Let's call this point B. Let's call this A. And let's give it a different value. Let's say minus 2 and 20. Right. I tell you, I tell you that the equation of this graph is given by f of x is equal to x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus c. Find a, b, c for six marks. What do you need to do, guys? We need to find the value of a, the value of b, the value of c. So in your answer, that's your question. That's the scenario that's given to you in your exam. Right? Remember, they'll either ask you to sketch the graph or they'll ask you to find the equation. So in this case here, they're asking you to find the equation. That's already given in your exam. You need to find its equation. Where do we go? Where do we start? We already know that our C value, we already know that our C value is 1. Why? That is your y-intercept. So your C value, we already know that C is equal to 1. Now what's given? What's given? Are our x-intercepts given? Have a look. 
Is our x-intercepts given? No, it's not. What's given? The two turning points of the graph. So whenever turning points are given, here's the rule. Whenever turning points are given, you always use the derivative. We always use the derivative. As you guys can see, I'm back to using my finger. The pen in the previous episode was making tick, 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 tick on the, on the screen, driving me insane. So we're back to using the finger. Fingers always work. Right. You know, the finger always works. Right. TP, derivative. Okay, so guys, adults, if you're sitting at home, this teacher is shouting you now. When last did you get shouted? Besides when your wife shout you for coming home late at night or if you, uh, if you didn't like the food, then the finger would be wagged at you. So I'm wagging my finger at you now. <laughs> derivative, we use the TPs. So now we're going to go the turning point. So we're going to find the derivative of that. So what are we going to do, guys? F dash X, the power rule. So what's the power rule? Remember in the previous episode, 3 times 1 is 3x squared plus 2ax plus 2ax plus b. Remember the x is to the power 0 will fall away, right? And then the c will fall away the constant term. So in your answer, that's where you'll do. You'll say c is equal to 1. That's your c value or your q value. They could call this q. No problem. So what do we have here? We've now got the derivative, and like I say in all the episodes, I'm not doing a rough calculation. Whatever I'm doing on the screen is exactly what you'll be doing in your final exam. Copy and paste, it's a template, right? You know you have a doctor, you have a surgeon, right? Those of you who are medical doctors, you know, or you are surgeons and you're watching the show and you're enjoying the show, it's refreshing your memory of the days gone by. You know you are about, you have a patient on an operating table. Right, And you need a certain process. You need to do a certain procedure. You're probably doing open heart surgery, for example. Right, And you know there are certain processes and certain procedures that you need to follow. Because you know if you mess up, if that scalpel falls or it slips or you do the process in the wrong order, you know what's gonna, what you're going to do to the patient. I don't need to tell you that. The same thing with math. Math is a body. There's the body. We are now about to apply certain procedures to that body in order to get our open heart surgery on point. Right, so let's start. How are we doing in our control room? All good, all good, all good. Guys, I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Please click like, subscribe to the Hilal TV channel. Let's go. We started with this. Let's now say, so we got SP1. Don't worry about your Y values. Cancel out your Y. Why do we cancel out y? Because we're not interested in y. We're interested in x. So we got our two x values. Let's call this sp1, stationary point 1 or turning point 1, and sp2. Right. So let's go here. sp1. sp1. Let's now put in the minus 2 for every x. So we got 3 into negative 2 squared plus 2a into negative 2 plus b is equal to 0. So negative 2 squared is 4. 4 times 3 is 12. Minus 4a plus b is equal to 0. We got minus 4a plus b is equal to minus 12. And let's divide by negative. So we got 4a minus b is equal to minus 12. We're going to call that one equation number 1. Now you know we're solving for a and b. Remember, we're solving for A and B. So whenever you have two unknowns in one equation, and yes, you said it, simultaneous equations. So we need two equations. That's equation number one in terms of A and B. We need our second equation. And that's where we're going to get it from, from the four. So now we're going to go, let's do it here on the side, three into four squared plus two A into four plus B is equal to 0. So 4 squared is 16 times 3 is 48 plus 8a plus b equals 0. So what do we have? 8a plus b is equal to minus 48 and we call that equation number 2. Can you see? Yo! I tell you this finger works like a charm on this board. Right! We've now mastered how this whole system operates. Okay, so let's go. We've got 4a minus b is equal to so let's write it here. Let's write it here. Let's do it in a different color, guys. Let's just do it in a different color quickly. We got 4a minus b is equal to minus 12. That's equation number one. We got 8a plus b is equal to minus 48. That's equation number two. What are we going to do to the two equations? We want to get rid of the b's. 
We want to get rid of the b's. So we're going to add the two equations. So 4a plus 8a, 12a. Minus b plus b, 0. Minus 12 minus 48 is minus 60. Yeah, I made this one up and see how God loves us. Right, so divide by 12. Divide by 12, perfect. A is equal to negative 60 divided by 12 is 5. So A is equal to minus 5. Works like a bomb. Works like a chum. Right. Let's now take this. Let's put it back into here. 4A. We got A. So 4 into minus 5 minus B equals minus 12. So minus 20 minus B equals minus 12. I'm going to move over here to the side. Minus B will equal to minus 12 plus 20 is 8. So B, divide by minus 1, divide by minus 1. B is equal to minus 8. There's A, there's B, there's A, there's B. Remember, we took this A and I plugged it into there in order to get this answer here. There's A, there's B, and there's C. And there we go. That brings us. So this was the second scenario. The first scenario was when the three X intercepts were given, and that we did in our previous show. All right. We're now doing now where your two turning points are given and you need to find the values of A, B, and C. There we go. That's a template. You just continue this at the bottom. You can split it up. No rough calculations. Exactly the way we did it on the screen is exactly the way you answer it in your final exam and you'll get full marks for it. Remember, destination distinction. Destination distinction. Okay. Right, hope you guys are enjoying the energy of the show. Whoever we've met, whoever we've spoken to, the WhatsApp me messages, everything. It's just bringing so much life into the show and we're actually loving it. Inshallah, for next year, we're going to be doing the, we're going to be running grade 10s and 11s and 12. This is only a grade 12 math rescue for this year. For 2023, stay tuned to Hilal TV. So much more to come. Right, so much more to come. Enjoy the magic. Let's go. Let's erase. Okay, now we're going into application. Now, this is the fun part, guys. So now we're going to be doing calculus application in real life. Now, this is where it gets fun. And if you didn't understand where all this is used in real life, right? If you are the viewer, you're a parent, you've passed matric or whatever, you've never done maths before, you want to see exactly where is this used, you're going to see now where calculus is used in everyday life. So calculus application in real life. And we give it a name in mathematics. We call it optimization what do we call it optimization right kids <laughs> right great ones what do we call it let's all say it together optimization <laughs> right you're gonna have fun in, in the studio remember something i'm talking to a camera i'm just enjoying it i'm seeing the whole thing i'm just trying to play the whole scenario as if i had you the viewers sitting here in the studio right so just enjoy the show right Forgive me for my craziness at times, but yeah, it's all part of the it's all part of the fun. The main thing is have fun. If you're not having fun, don't do maths. Okay. Right, agreed. Control room. I'm getting the thumbs up. So calculus application optimization. Now, generally, here yeah, we're talking about volume and total surface area. So we're dealing with volume. In fact, let's do this. You get three types of optimization, right? You get three types of optimization. So let's do this. Let's break it up for you. Let me show you the three types of optimization you get in mathematics. The first one is to do with measurement, right? Volume, total surface area, right? Volume and total surface area. You know of your shapes, of your prisms, of your cube, your cylinder, your Toblerone box, right? You know the uh, rectangular prism? The rectangle, uh, no, sorry, triangular prism, right? You can work out the volume total surface area using calculus. Number two, so this was number one. Number two, we have graphical represent, uh, representation, graphs, using graphs. We're going to do each one of these, right? So this one here is volume and total surface area. There we have graphs. And the next one, the last one, you got velocity and acceleration. Velocity acceleration don't stress it's all easy right i'll show you exactly how to do each one how to find the volume using calculus how to find total surface area using calculus how to find calculus um how to find distances or area 
under graphs or even distance formulas using graphs and then obviously velocity and acceleration. So these are your, that's your overview of your topic. You might see, you'll only get one of these in your exam. Please make sure you master all, all three. Okay, now let's start with the first one, volume and total surface area. Let's start with volume and total surface area. So you've got your uh, Kurtuba online books, right, from all the shows. Put your new heading there, volume, total surface area. I'm, we're going to make up certain scenarios, right? Remember, I'm not working from any script. This is totally unscripted, guys. Remember, our shows are totally, yes, I've got a plan in my mind of what I'm going to be doing, but it's totally unscripted. I don't even have notes here in front of me. If the camera was here, they'd show it to you. The only thing we've got here is my phone, which is now the... Uh, scientific calculator, which we're using the Cas Casio FX991. Okay, right, so let's go back to the show. Back to the show. Let the show, let the games begin. Let's do what volume. Now, you know, in school, they give you different total surface areas for different shapes. I'm going to give you one formula that you can use for all standard shapes. Now, listen. And listen, what does total surface area mean? Total surface area means here's a cup of coffee, right? We want to find out how much of cardboard is required to make this cup. Or we want to find out how much of paint is required in order to paint this cup. And if this was a building, if this was a building, now let's scale this thing up. We want to find out exactly how much of bricks, how much of tiles, how much of glass will be required, or how much of paint to paint the outside. It means exactly what it says total surface area. So come I give you one formula that you can use for all standard shapes, right? So total surface area, total surface, remember the key word here is surface, the total surface area. Now we get different, we get, you see this cup here, you see this cup, this coffee cup here, unbranded because nobody sponsored it, right? So here we go, that's our cup. What we're going to do, it's closed on the top and it's closed at the bottom. Right? It's closed on top. It's closed at the bottom. So how many bases do I have? I've got two. One, two. I've got two bases. So total surface area for a closed top and bottom. For a closed top and bottom. Right, we're going to say total surface area, TSA, total surface area, is equal to two. Why two? Because it's closed top and bottom. Two times area of base. So take this down area of the base plus perimeter perimeter of base oops i don't have enough space here times your height times capital h if i make if i shorten this it would be two area of base two a b plus perimeter of base perimeter of base times your height so just remember total surface area for all your standard shapes is 2AB plus PBH. That's for closed top and bottom. Now that would, obviously, what would this apply to? What would this apply to? Let's see if there's anything here with regard to shapes. Can we draw any shapes in here? Can we draw any shapes in here? Doesn't, oh, there we go. There we go, there we got shapes. Let's see what shapes we have in here. Let's see, let's go to 3D shapes. Oh yes, there we go, but Ah, I might as well just draw it, right? That's a cylinder. These are all not, not standard shapes. So let's go into standard shapes. So let's go here. Your standard shapes. No, no, no. Let's go there. Let's go erase. Let's go back to pen. Right. So basically, what do we have? We've got a cube. Right? Total surface area would be, now say it was closed on the top and closed at the bottom. We'd say two times area of base plus perimeter of base times your height. Then we've got a rectangular prism. All right, so there we go. That's a rectangular prism. Then we got a cylinder. So cylinder would look like that. And then you've got a triangular prism. Now, obviously, that's your radius. That's a circle. It's supposed to be a circle. That's your R, your radius. And then you've got a triangular prism. So you've got a triangular prism that looks like that. Like we said earlier, like a Toblerone, you know, the chocolate Toblerone box. There we go. So these are your standard shapes. I'm not talking about your sphere, your dome, your pyramid, or your cone. That they'll give you the formula. I'm just talking about your standard shapes. Two times area of base plus perimeter of base times height. Now you might ask, you might, so take this formula down. 
2AB plus PBH. What is it? To find the total surface area, 2AB plus PBH. Remember that. What if the top is open? So let's, uh, let's open the top. And there we go. We've got how many bases now? How many bases do I have? I've only got one base. So obviously, if the top was open, they'll tell you whether it's open on the top or whether it's closed. Then you just adjust your formula. Then for open top, so let's say if it was open on the top, then total surface area will just equal to 1 times area of base plus perimeter of base times height. So you can manipulate this one formula. And if it was open, this is an open top. But what if it was open on the top like a toilet roll holder? It's open at the bottom, open on the top. There's no base. There you would just say total surface area. Total surface area is equal to perimeter of base times height if top and bottom are open. Top and bottom are open. So you don't need to learn all these three. You just need to learn this one. 2AB plus PBH. Now obviously your area of base will change. If it's a square, length times breadth. If it's a rectangle, length times breadth. If it's a cylinder, pi r squared. If it's a triangle, half base times perpendicular height. Perimeter of your base. What's your perimeter? By now you should be knowing your perimeter formulas. The distance around. So the distance around a square would be 4 times side. The distance around a rectangle, you all know, grade 12, you in grade 12 already, 2 times length plus 2 times breadth. The perimeter of a circle or the circumference of a circle. How do you calculate circumference? How do you calculate the circumference of a circle? It's 2 pi r. Not pi r squared, eh? Be careful. Pi r squared is for area. Perimeter is 2 times pi. You all know pi. 3,14. Or 22 over 7. Times your radius. And then obviously of uh, the perimeter of a triangle would be side plus side plus side. Right? And that would be your height. 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 And there we go. 2AB plus PBH. The one formula. I just did this whole thing here to show you where we where we utilize it. We're going to actually work out the total surface area now of a cylinder. So we're going to do, we're going to start off with the cylinder and we're all going to be doing it together. 2AB, 2AB, the crucial part here of this whole thing here is that. That's it. That's what you've got to learn. Okay, children. Okay, babies. <laughs> Let's go. We need to learn this. Total surface area, 2AB plus PBH. Okay, let's find out from control room. We've got two minutes to go. We've wrapped this whole thing up. You've got all of this. I'm going to clear the screen, guys. I'm going to clear the screen. I'm going to leave you with one to do. Right, so here goes. We're going we're gonna to cut for break. I'm going to give you one example. You're going to work it out during break, all of you. Right, even if, you, uh, if you're a parent or whatever, you want to try and have fun during the break while you're having your coffee. I mean, what better way to have coffee than to do math while having coffee? So here we have, we have a cylinder. That's a cylinder. That's our radius. That's our R. This is, let's say, 200 minus X. That's our height. I tell you, question number one, find the total surface area of the shape, of that shape, in terms of X. Right, number two, find x giving maximum area, find x giving maximum area. And then the last question, find the maximum area of the cylinder. Find the maximum area. Now, this is a typical exam question as well. It will be worth about 10 marks in your exam. Okay, guys, take this one down. We're cutting for break. I hope you enjoyed the first segment. Stay tuned. We've got some exciting stuff coming up in our second segment. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to our second segment of today's calculus show, right? Remember, I'm your host, I'm your presenter, Mr. K from the K-Way Institute, doing the show here for Kurtuba Online in association and partnership with Kurtuba Online Academy as well as Hilal TV. Hope you guys are enjoying the show. Before the break, I gave you this question to do and some of you might be sitting there and thinking, I think he made a mistake. Well, maybe so, maybe so. Right. What I should have given you, I should have called this X. I think, I hope you picked that up. 
I should have called that x instead of r. And this here to be 200 minus x. Okay, so here goes. Let's answer question number one. Find the total surface area of the shape in terms of x. Let's assume that the base it's closed on the top and closed at the bottom. So I gave you that one formula, right? I gave you that one formula. I told you that total surface area, total surface area, number one, let's go, total surface area. If the top and bottom are closed, we say 2AB, two, 2 times area of base, plus perimeter of your base times your height, because it's closed on the top and at the bottom. So 2 times, what's the area of a circle? What is the area of a circle? It's pi r squared plus perimeter of your base is 2 pi r. That's your circumference times your height. And there we go. That's how, that's the formula. Remember, mathematics is about having the correct formula and then substituting and finding, the, making what you are looking for the subject of your formula. So let's go. So this will give me 2. Pi, I'm just going to use it as 3,14 just for uh, calculation purposes. But you can use the pi on your calculator or you can use 22 over 7. Right. Multiplied by r, your radius squared. So it's x squared plus 2 times pi, 3,14. Multiply by, so 2 pi r is x. Multiply by your height, which is 200 minus x. There we go. That's your height. That is your height, 200 minus x. We now just substitute 2 times 3,14 is 6,28x squared plus 2 times 3,14 is 6,28x into 200 minus x. Let's multiply this out. 6,28x squared plus 200 times 6. 200 times 6,28. So let's go to our calculator. Let's say 200 times 6,28. And we get 1,256. 1,256. X. Remember, I'm multiplying this by that. X. Minus. Then I'm going to get now 6,28. X times X is X squared. All right? So I get 6,28 x squared plus 6,28 into 200 minus x. 6,28 times 200, 12,56 x minus 6,28 x squared. Right, that was number 2, that's not a square. So 2 pi r and h. Now we got 6,28 x squared minus 6,28 x squared is 0. I get 1,256 x. Right, that's my total surface area in terms of x. So now we're going to find out. So there we go. Find your total surface area of the shape. Let's just do a quick check, guys. Let's just see. I just want to check that my calculations are correct. So 2AB, 2 pi r squared, 2 pi and r squared, that's correct, plus 2 pi r times h, 2 times 3,14 times x, h. So we get 6,28 x squared plus, I'm just checking this out here, plus We've got 2 times 3,14 times 200. That will give me your 1,256x. And then you've got 6,28x times minus x, which will give you your minus 6,28x squared. That and that cancels out, and that is correct. Our final answer, 1,256x. That is your total surface area of the shape in terms of x. Number two, find x giving maximum area. So let's go. Question number two. So now your total surface area is 1, 2, 5, 6, x. Whenever we say minimum or maximum, we need to use derivative. So we say therefore dA over dx is equal to 1 times 2, 5, uh, 1, 2, 5, 6 is 1, 2, 5, 6. And there we go. That's it. Okay. 1, 2, 5, 6. The x, x will fall away. And that's your final answer. DA over DX is going to give you your 1, 2, 5, 6. Okay, guys, we're back with this. You've got DA over DX. In this case here, your X fell away. So you've got 1, 2, 5, 6 units square. And that's going to be your final answer, right? That's going to be your final answer. Let's do one in terms of volume. Let's take the same shape. Let's take the same shape. Let's do it in terms of volume, right? So let's take that. Let's take your radius as X. Let's go there. And let's say this is 300 minus x. Right. 
Let's do it in terms of volume. So let's say find the volume in terms of x. Find the volume in terms of x. In terms of x. Let's say find x giving maximum volume. Find x giving maximum volume. Now you might be thinking in the previous one and then find the maximum volume. Find the maximum volume. You might be asking uh, what happened in the last one. The last one, the x fell away when we found the derivative. That was our final answer. So we couldn't go any further than that. That's why I'm choosing this one here in terms of volume. Because this will allow us to find a derivative and then to find an x and then plug the x back in. So just follow me. Let's go here. The volume. Now we know volume of a cylinder is equal to pi r squared times height. Pi is 3,14 times r x squared and your height is 300 minus x. So this will give me 3,14 x squared into 300 minus x. You're now going to get, if I multiply this out, 300 times 3,14, you're going to get 9,42 x squared minus 3,14 x squared times x1 is x cubed. Right, so that is going to be your volume in terms of x. 942x squared minus 3,14x cubed. Right, that's question number one, that's question number two, that's question number three. So there we go, all we did is we just substituted into the formula. Question number two, find x giving maximum volume. So now we're going to use the derivative, we're going to say therefore dv over dx is equal to 2 times 942 is 1884, right? 2 times 9, 1800, 2 times 42, 84, right, so x minus 3 times 3,14 will give me 9,42 x squared, right, I'm just going to move over here and for minimum or maximum, the derivative must always equal to 0, right, dv over dx, I did the derivative here and I equated it to 0, we now need to solve for x, so I'm going to take out 9,42 as my x as my highest common factor from there and there. I'm going to take out 9,42. That divided by that, it's 200 minus. This divided by that is x is equal to 0. I got two terms equal to 0. I just took out the HCF, guys. I just took out the highest common factor there to give me 9,42x into 200 minus x. So now we got 9,42x equals 0, or we got 200 minus x equals 0. We got x is equal to 0 over that is 0, or you're going to have minus x will equal to minus 200, divide by negative, x will equal to 200. In this case, in this case, 200 is x giving maximum volume, right? Now, normally what you would do, guys, You'd substitute the 0 and the 200, whichever gives you the higher positive volume, because you can't get a negative volume of a shape, right? You substitute each of them into the original, whichever gives you the higher positive value, that would be x giving maximum volume. So x can't be 0, because if I put 0 here, 0 can't be the radius of a, of a shape. So this one will fall away. So what's your final answer? To find x giving maximum volume, your answer is going to be 200. Now the last question, find the maximum volume. So all we're going to do, we're going to take this 200 and we're going to substitute it back into original. We're going to take the 200 and we're going to substitute it back into the original. So what are we going to have here? So we had volume was equal to 942x squared minus 3,14x cubed. So volume is equal to 942 into 200 squared, because you found x to be 200, minus 3,14 into 200 cubed, and that would give you 1, 2, 5, 6, 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units squared. Let's just check it. Let's just check it. So we got, let's go to our calculator. We got 942 into... 200 squared minus 3,14 into 200 cubed to the power 3 
equals, oh, it's one, two, five, six, and four zeros. One, two, five, six, one, two, three, and four zeros. So we just take out two zeros from there. That's out, and that's out. That's your final answer, guys. That's your final answer. And there we go. That is, you found the maximum volume of that cylinder. Okay, let's take another shape, guys. Let's take another shape. Um, let's erase this. Let's erase this. Let's do one more in terms of shapes. And then we're going to go in. Let's do another example. Let's do example number two. All right. I'll give you a square. Let's take a square here, guys. Uh, put a point here. Let's put a point there. Let's put a point here. And let's put a point there. So let's do this, guys. Let's do that, that, that. That. So we got a square within a square. So what we call this, we call this an inscribed square, right? So we've got a square within a square. Now obviously that's 90 degrees, that's 90, that's 90, that's 90. That piece is equal to that piece, is equal to that piece, is equal to that piece. I call that x, that small piece is x. The entire distance from there to there, I call it 400. Right? So it could be meters, it could be centimeters, it could be millimeters. Makes no difference. Let's just call it units for now, just for argument's sake. The question says, find the area of the inscribed square. For, for one question for 10 marks, or maybe eight marks, find the area of the shaded part, the shaded part or the inscribed square. Right, which is obviously the shaded part for eight marks. Okay, so here we've got a square within a square. Remember, that side is also equal to that side, is also equal to that, is also equal to that. Right, so what do we need to do? How do we go about doing this? Number one, number one, we need to find the area in terms of x. Then we've got to use the derivative, right? Remember, it's all done in three parts. We find the, the area in terms of x, we use derivative in order to find the maximum area in the, uh, the or find find x giving maximum area and the last part to find the maximum area. So here goes. Let's do this. Question the number one or step number one, part number one. We're going to say now look here. If from here to here is x and this whole side is 400, obviously this little piece here, this little piece from there to there is going to be 400 minus x, the total minus that piece. So there we go. That's 400 minus x, and that's x. Now, you do agree with me, this is a triangle, a 90-degree triangle. I can use Pythagoras to find the one side. And remember, then if I get the one side, obviously I'll get the other side, and that's how I'm going to find the area. So I'm going to use Pythagoras here. So let's call this h for hypotenuse, right? Remember, I'm looking at this triangle here. So we're now going to go h squared, right? The theorem of Pythagoras is equal to x squared plus 400 minus x all squared. So h squared is equal to x squared plus, now we're squaring a binomial. So 400 squared is 16,000, am I right? 4 squared is 16, 1, 2, 3, 4 is 16,000 minus, minus 400 times 2 is minus 800x plus x squared. So what am I left with? h squared is equal to 1x squared plus 1x squared, 2x squared minus 800x plus 160,000, 160,000, right, four zeros. That is h squared. So obviously h is going to equal to the square root of 2x squared minus 800x plus 160,000. And that's your h. And that's also h. So therefore, area, area is equal to length times breadth, which is equal to h times h, which is equal to h squared, right? Which is obviously equal to h squared. What was h, h squared equal to? 2x squared minus 800x plus 160,000. And that is your area in terms of x. But 
What do we need to do? We don't want it in terms of X. We want the actual area of that shaded part. So now we're going to find the derivative. Right, so step number two, I'm going to say DA, therefore, step number two, that was step number one. Step number two, I'm going to say, therefore, DA over DX is going to equal to, let's find the derivative of this. Uh, what do we have here? Um, we got area is equal to, remember, our, what was our area? 2x squared minus 800. This is area. Remember, h squared was our area. So what are we going to do? 2 times 2, what am I left with? 4x minus 800. Am I right? 2 times 2 is 4. X minus 1 times 800 is 800. The 160,000 will fall away. And for minimum or maximum, your derivative is equal to 0. 4X will equal to 800. X will equal to 800 divided by 4 is 200. So in this case also, X is equal to 200. Now to find the maximum area. We only found, the, found x giving maximum area. Now we need to find the maximum area. So we just take this 200 and we substitute it back into your original. So let's do this in a different color to show you here. We're now going to take that 200 and we're going to substitute it in there for every x. So what's your final answer? Your area will equal to. Let's go to our calculators. We now for every x guys, for every x we're going to put how much? 200. So let's go to our calculators. We go 2 into 200 squared. There we go. Minus 800 into 200. Close brackets. Plus 160,000. Plus 160,000. Am I right? 160,000. Let's go back. I think it's 1. 160, 123. There we go. So our final answer is 80,000 units. 160. Let me just go back here. I just want to double check. 160 and then 123. There we go. 80,000. Your final answer is 80,000 units square. So 80,000 units square. And that's your final answer, guys. And you'll probably get about six to eight marks for this. How did we do it? Just to show you, let's just break it up. Number one, we use Pythagoras to find the one side. So h squared, remember all this here was Pythagoras. I'm just going to recap it for you. So we got h squared was equal to that. So h was equal to this. And then we went into area, the area of a square, length times breadth, h times h, which is h squared. And we had h squared. What was h squared? Here's it, 2x squared minus 800x plus 160,000. So we put a tick there. Step number two, what did I do in step number two? We found dA over dx. We used the derivative to solve for x. So all we do, we find the derivative of this. We get 4x minus 800 equals to 0. 4x is equal to 800. x is equal to 200. We then take the 200. We put it back into your original and you get the maximum area of that shape. Okay, guys, that brings us, that's the end of the first part. Remember I said it was broken up. Calculus application broken up into how many parts? Three parts. Remember the first one was shapes. The second one was graphs. The last one was speed, acceleration, velocity. Okay, so we're now going into the second part. I'm going to clear this. I hope you've understood this one here. They can change the shape. Whatever shape, they can give you a box. They can give you a cylinder. They can give you half a cylinder, right? You just got to use the appropriate formula. So the first thing in this here, you'll give your volume area, total surface area in terms of X. You'll find X giving minimum or maximum area. After you solve for X, you put it back into the original. You'll get your maximum area or volume of the shape. Okay, guys. Hope you guys are enjoying. I hope you still focus. You're staying tuned. Some of you might have we might have lost you along the way, but don't worry, we're going to bring you back now in the second part. So we're now doing part two, right? We're doing part two, where they give you a graph. So let's say they gave you a graph like this. They gave you a, a parabola like that. They gave you a rectangle. That's zero. That piece is equal to that piece. That piece is X. Let's say that's X. Let's say this is P, Q, R, S, right? These points, P, Q, R, S. And they tell you this is graph F. They shade that part. They want the area. Find the maximum area of the shaded part. The question in the exam, find the maximum area. 
of the shaded part. That's your question for eight marks in your exams. And they give us the equation of f. They tell us f of x is equal to minus 3x squared plus 18. They tell us f of x is equal to minus 3x squared plus 18. Find the maximum area of the shaded part. Okay, so if you lost me in the previous one, let's bring you back into it. Right. This question must be answered like we said in the previous question in how many parts? Three parts. Right. How many parts? Three. What's the first part? The first part is we need to find the area in terms of x. Right? We're going to find the area in terms of x. What's the second part? We're going to find x giving maximum area. We're going to use a derivative. And then after we get the answer, we're going to substitute it back into the original. Then we're going to sub back into the original. We're going to get our final answer. Right? Now we know area is equal to length times breadth. Area is equal to length times breadth. Right? What's my length? If this piece is x, that piece must also be x. That means my length here or my breadth here, you can call this one length or breadth, x plus x is 2x. Right. Now we know if from here to here is x, I need my breadth. If that is length, I need my breadth. So I know that s's x value is x because from here to here is x. And its y value, its y value is that is minus 3x squared plus 18. That's your x value. That's your y value. Right? Remember, because it lies on the function. No matter what this x was. If this x was 2, we'd put in 2 to get y. If this was 5, we put in 5. If this was 10, we put in 10. So if it's x, that is our, the actual equation of the function at that point is going to be this x value here. That's your y value. Okay, now area is equal to length times breadth. What's my length? 2x. Multiply by my breadth, which we found, which is my distance here, minus 3x squared plus 18. And there we go, minus 3x squared plus 18. Let's multiply that out. So area is equal to positive times negative is a negative. 2 times 3 is 6. x times x squared is x cubed plus 2 times 18 is 36 x. And there we go. That is your area in terms of x. Now we need to find step number two. We need to use derivative. So this was in terms of x. Now we're going to be using derivative. So therefore dA over dx is going to equal to power rule minus 18x squared plus 36 equals to 0, minus 18x squared will equal to minus 36, negative and negative will cancel, divide by 18, divide by 18, x squared is equal to 2, so x will equal to plus or minus the square root of 2. So that is x finding, uh, that is x giving maximum or minimum area. Now we need to find the maximum area. So that was step number one. That's step number two. We're now going into step number three. We're going into step number three. Therefore, therefore, your maximum area, maximum area is going to equal to, so area is equal to, what was our area? Minus 6x cubed, minus 6x cubed. Um, plus 36x, plus 36x. Now let's put in plus 2, minus 6 into root 2. We just found root 2. There we go. We found root 2 there. Root 2 cube plus 36 into root 2. And let's see if we get a positive answer. Right, we should get, we have to get a positive answer. So let's go again. So we're going to go minus 6 into square root 2. Uh, let's go root 2. Uh, close brackets, cubed, cubed, so let's go up, let's say cubed, let's go to the side again, plus 36 into square root 2, go to the side, close the brackets, what do I get? I get 24 root 2, and let's change that, I get 33,94 units cubed. And there we go, guys, that is your final answer, we've done it in three parts, We've done it in three parts. Let me just recap this for you. We found the area in terms of x. There we go. That was your area. That was part number one. 
Right, part number two, so that was your area in terms of x. Part number two, we used the derivative and we solved for x. Step number three, this was step number three. We then find the maximum area, we substitute the square root two into your original. We substitute it into your original and we get your final answer, 33,94 units cubed. And there we go. That's the way you do it. So whenever you're given a graph, whenever you're given this, guys, what we have to do, I just want to find a control room. How many minutes we got left? Right, we've got four minutes left. Left. Let's just wrap up the segment. What we're going to do, whenever you're given a graph, if they don't give you an X value, you put X. And then when there's a point on the graph, you make it F of X. To explain to you what I mean, to explain to you what I mean, let's do another just to show you. So let's say they gave you this, right? And uh, let's say they gave you a point. Let's say they gave you a graph that went like this. And this graph was going to cut here. And let's say they gave you the, they, they give you a point here. And that point is A. They tell you that this point here is say 10. They don't give you this value here. So basically what, what they want, they're going to give you the equation of this graph. And let's say they call this graph H. And they tell you that H of X is equal to, um, let's say 4X squared plus 10. Let's say they tell you 4X squared plus 10. Just for example, right? Obviously, you don't know A's coordinates. You don't know A's coordinates. If the question in the exam wanted the distance between here, right? Let's go here from there to there. And they said, find the maximum distance of A, B. You got B's coordinates. B's coordinates is 0 and 10. You don't have A's coordinates. How are you going to do it? The reason why I showed you this one is exactly what we did in the previous one. We don't have its x value, so we just call it x. And what did I tell you? What is its y value? Its y value is the function value at that point. Its y value is going to be 4x squared plus 10. And now you just go, you can call this x1, y1, x2, y2. You can use the distance formula and you can now find your maximum length in terms of x. Guys, I hope you're following. I hope you're following. This was the end of the second part. The first part we did was shapes. The second part that we did was graphs. If they don't give you an X value, you put X and it's Y value. You put it as the function value on that function. Okay, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed the second segment. We're going to take a short break. We're going to take an ad break. Take a deep breath. We're going to finish off with speed, velocity, and acceleration in our last segment of calculus. And this is going to wrap up calculus for 2022. Guys, see you guys after the break. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back from our break. You are joined to uh, channel 347. Uh, Hilal TV with the Kurtuba Online Math Show and me, your host and presenter, Mr. K from the Kway Institute in association with Kurtuba Online Academy, the best online academy. Get your child enrolled. Okay, let's get started. We're starting with velocity. I hope you guys enjoyed our section on calculus today. Remember, what have we done today? We've done optimization. So we've done, um, we're busy with Volume, total surface area. Remember, I told you optimization application in real life broken up into three parts. You can check our segment. If you missed the segment, go to Hilal TV, go to YouTube, click on the link on the Kurtuba online. You'll find the episode. Okay, we're starting with the last component. The three components were uh, volume and total surface area. The second component was working with graphs. And the third one for application is velocity and speed. Now, Let's give you a typical life example here, right? So you have a mountain here. You have a mountain. You have the ocean here at the bottom. You have a person standing here on the top. And he's about to throw a stone down. Right? There is he standing there. Let's give him a little hat there on the top. And he's about to... He's standing on the, on the edge of a cliff. He's looking at the bottom. Probably... He went to Nizna or Platt, a beautiful country, standing there on the edge of a cliff and he's about to throw a stone down. And now we're going to calculate the velocity, the acceleration of that stone as it hits the water. Okay, so here's a real life example. So this is a cliff. So let's just put here, that's a cliff. 
Here's a man standing there. He's got a stone in his hand and he's going to drop it. So it's going to free fall. He's not going to throw it. He's not going to push it. So there's no, when we're dealing with uh, physics, there's no initial velocity, right? So he's starting there and it's a free fall. He's dropping the stone. The trajectory, let's see, how high is the cliff? Let's say the cliff is 230 meters, right? The cliff is 230 meters high. That's a high cliff. That's a very, very, very high cliff. And he's about to drop the stone. We want to now calculate. We tell you that the displacement is given ST displacement given by, let's say, 5T squared minus 6T uh, minus... 80. There we go. Now that is an equation. That is the equation of the stone, of the displacement. Another word for displacement, another word for displacement is going to be the distance. So another word for the distance of that stone traveled is going to be given by 5t squared minus 60 minus 80. Here are your questions. Question number one. Question number one. Um, calculate, calculate the velocity. And another word for ve velocity is the speed of the stone, of the stone, after two seconds, after two seconds. Question number two, calculate the acceleration of the stone, the acceleration of the stone after five seconds. Okay, so now we're dealing with, this is very easy. The minute they say the word velocity or speed, you know it's first derivative. So what I want you to write here, the velocity, another word for velocity or speed is first derivative. The minute they talk about acceleration, second derivative. Right? Why first derivative? Do you, for those of you who do physics, you know speed of velocity is ms to the minus 1. And acceleration is ms to the minus 2. That is why velocity or speed is first derivative. Remember first derivative, we subtract 1 from the power. Remember the power rule, right, from when we do derivatives. So there we go, calculate the velocity or speed. So whenever they use the word calculate velocity or calculate speed, we are calculating, we're using first derivative, and that's your ms to the minus 1. And whenever they ask you about acceleration, we're using second derivative, and that is ms to the minus 2. Okay, so let's answer this question. Now, t is your time in seconds. Remember, t is your time in seconds. T is your time in seconds. So your displacement of the stone is given by that equation where T represents time. Okay, so cal calculate the velocity of the stone after two seconds. Calculate the acceleration of the stone after five seconds. So let's go. Let's, let's, let's attack this. Question number one. We're now answering question number one. So now first derivative. So you're going to say S dash T is equal to. We're now going to find the first derivative of that. So 2 times 5 is 10t minus 1 times 6 is 6, right? The t will fall away, the 80 will fall away. And now after 2 seconds, so this is the speed. This is speed or this is velocity. S dash t is 10t minus 6. So S dash, after how many seconds guys? 2 seconds is equal to 10 into 2 minus 6. T is your time. So 2 times 10 is 20 minus 6, which is equal to 14 meters per second. So the speed of the stone from the time that it is dropped is moving at 14 meters per second. No, after 2 seconds. After 2 seconds. So when you checked, when you counted 1, 2, you checked it at 2 seconds, the speed of the stone that it reached after 2 seconds would be 14 meters per second. Calculate the acceleration of the stone. So now we're going to go S double dash T. So the derivative of the derivative, the second derivative. So obviously 1 times 10 is 10. 
The T will fall away. The 6 will fall away. Meters per second to the minus 2. And that's your final answer. Does it matter after 5 seconds? No. Why? Because it's got a constant acceleration. So whether it's after 1 second, 2 seconds, 3 seconds, 4 seconds, 5 seconds, doesn't make a difference. That stone is falling. When that stone is dropped, it is moving at 10 meters per second. It's accelerating at 10 meters per second. And there we go. We've answered the first two questions. Let's give you one more question to wrap this topic up. So whenever they're talking about speed, acceleration, just remember, the minute they ask you speed or velocity, you know first derivative. The minute they tell you acceleration, they're talking about second derivative. Okay, let's give you one more question here. Let's give you one more question. So you've taken this down. Let's see. So we go there, go there, go there, go there. Let's take all this out. And let's give you another question here. After how many seconds? Let's go. Let's see if we can get all this out. Right. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do that. Let's take that out as well. After how many seconds? Take this question now. Let me dictate it to you. Right. While I'm busy erasing the board here. After how many seconds? Will the stone be 150 meters above the ground? After how many seconds? After how many seconds will the stone be 150 meters above the ground? So let's go. Let's take that question down. Right? Let's do question number three. After how many seconds will the stone... B, 150 meters above sea level. Right. Take that question down. Let's see whether you can tackle it. Let's see whether you can tackle it. Remember, read the question carefully. Read the question carefully. After how many seconds will the stone be? 150 meters above sea level. So if the height here, so remember, we want to find out it will be 150 meters above sea level. So obviously 230 minus 150 will give me 80 meters from where he dropped the stone. From there to there will be 80 meters. And remember, your displacement is given from the time he drops. Remember, that equation is calculated from there. It's not calculated from bottom up. It's calculated from top down. So that means we now got to say, to answer question number three, we now got to say 5t squares. Uh, 5t squared. After how many seconds? So what are we calculating? T. After how many seconds will it be 150 meters above sea level? So 5t squared minus 60 minus 80 minus 80. Sorry, that's from my equation is equal to 80, is equal to 80, not equal to 150. Why? Because they said 150 meters above sea level. So it was 230 meters minus your 150 meters, and that's where we get our 80 there. So now let's work it out as a quadratic equation. 5t squared minus 60 minus 80 minus 80 is minus 160 is equal to zero. So now you're going to get T is equal to, you're going to get two solutions. Let's now go to our calculators. Uh, let's go mode. Let's go mode. And we're going to go AX squared plus BX plus C. So now we're going to go five equals negative six equals. We're going to go minus 160 equals equals. So you get minus 5,08, negative 5,08. That's your first T solution. Your second T solution is 6,288 or 6,29 seconds. Now, which one is valid? Which one is not valid? Can time ever be negative? No. So therefore, after 6,29 seconds or 6,3 seconds, uh, the stone will be. So your final answer here, the only answer here is 6,29. Therefore, after... 
0.29 or approximately 6.3 seconds. The stone will be 150 meters above sea level. And there we go, guys. That wraps up your velocity and speed. You can try so many past papers. You can work through all your past papers. We've completed the whole of calculus. Let's just do a, a recap. If you've missed anything in any of the shows, remember we've ca we've calculated, uh, we've done differentiate, uh, we've done first principles, we've done derivative, we've done differentiation, we've done finding equations of tangents to a graph at a point. We did sketching the cubic graph. We did finding equations of the cubic graph. We also then did optimization, which was today's last uh, today's episode. We've done volume and total surface area. And remember, I gave you one formula for all standard shapes. I hope you remember from the previous segment, total surface area for all shapes, 2AB plus PBH. Remember that formula? 2 times area of base plus perimeter of your base times height. That if it's, if it's a closed top and bottom, if it's open, 1 times area of base. Common sense, it only has one base. So it's just area of base plus perimeter of base times your height. We then did graphs. If they don't give you an X on the graph, you put an X there at that point and the function value is your Y value at that point. If you missed any of this, please go to our pre previous segment or go to Hilal TV. Go watch the replay on YouTube, right? Channel 347, Hilal TV. We then did our last component of optimization which is speed and velocity. Just to do a recap, when we speak about velocity, we speak about speed. When we talk about speed, when we talk about speed, what are we talking about? Okay, I, I think I erased that. So we'll just write this here. When we talk about speed, we talk about first derivative. Remember this. When we talk about speed, we're talking about first derivative. When we talk about acceleration, we then talk about second derivative. And if you know, if you've been following the series, you know second derivative is your point of inflection, concavity. Sec uh, acceleration is your second derivative. Okay, guys. Guys, that brings us to the end of calculus. So what have we done so far? We've done the whole of functions, just going through all our, uh, all our episodes before. I'm just going to tell you what we've done and where we are still going. So we've done the whole of functions. We've done sequences and series. We've done sigma notation. We've done the whole of calculus. We now, in our next episode, guys, stay tuned for our next episode. We're going to be doing finance. I'm going to be doing the whole grade 12 component for finance. It's going to be a bumper, uh, um, and bumper episode. We're going to be covering future value, present value, annuities, when to use it. We're going to do trading of an asset, balance outstanding on, of a loan, what happens when you make an immediate payment, what happens if you pay late, and then we're going to calculate what we call the final payment. Okay, and that is going to be the whole mind map for our next episode, which is going to be on finance. Okay, guys, hope you guys are enjoying the show. You guys like the show. You want more of these shows for other grades. You want it for grade 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Guys, call Hilal TV. Call Hilal TV, speak to the CEO, speak to the production team there. Their lines are open all the time. You like the show, you want more of these shows on a regular basis. Let them know so that I can assist you guys for all the different grades. From me, Mohamed Kota, from the rest of the control room here every uh, and everybody here at the Kurtuba Online Academy. Assalamu alaikum and I shall see you in our next episode. في ساحة للعلم كنا نلتقي والحب والإخلاص زاد قلوبنا نمضي إلى نور اليقين ونرتقي قمم الفلاح وتاجنا أخلاقنا